on your canvas, you're going to go to Pop Art with Inkscape. When you open up that window, you're going to see the instructions here, and it says download your animal from this link. If I click on this link, it will pop up to a window that has all of the animals that have been photographed and sent to the um, link appropriately. So you find your animal and you double click on it and then you're going to click over here to download. So the next thing that you need to do then is to open Inkscape. If you type in down here Inkscape it'll pop up and then you can open from here. Double click to open that. It may take a few minutes for it to load but you'll be able to um, see it once it pops up. So give it a chance to load. Don't keep clicking it over and over again. I'm now going to go to File, Open, and I want to go to my Downloads folder. If your Downloads folder doesn't pop up, you will look under this PC, and then there will be Downloads. Open the Download folder and scroll until you find your photograph and click open. This is going to open up an import window. It says to embed from file, leave the defaults, just say OK. Once that's done, you want to make it full screen and um, you see your image now and you're going to start You'll notice that there are arrows all the way around. That shows that this image is selected. And we're going to now go to Path, Trace Bitmap. Click on Trace Bitmap. Over here on the Trace Bitmap, just leave all of the defaults the way they are. But you're going to click Live Preview of your animal and click OK. Now you can close that window. And back over to this screen, I'm, I can see that I have an outline around here. I'm going to click on the background one and hit my delete key. And I should have a pure black and white image now that I can work with. Okay, so from here, you're going to start using the paint bucket. The paint bucket is on the left-hand side right here. Click on the paint bucket and I can fill in the area with paint. If it's not the color that I want, I can go and find the color of blue that I plan to use as my blue. You'll notice that there are little bits of white at the edge, so I'm going to use Control-0, and it's going to fill it out to the edges right here. I want to do the same thing in this space, and then Control-0, maybe twice. And in this space, control zero. And then in this little space, control zero twice. So now I have the top half of the sky. I'm going to do the bottom half of the sky, control zero. And now I am ready to um, start filling in some of the other colors. I'm using primary and secondary colors. So green is a secondary color. I have to fill first, and then I go down to this bottom bar and find the green that I plan to use, which I like this pure green. And then I'm going to enlarge it slightly, control zero. That's how I change the color. Don't click on top and make a different color, then go and change a color and try to click and click because the more times I click, I'm just gonna have lots of extra layers that I don't really need in here. Okay, so if I wanna get rid of extra layers, I can select them and delete them. Same thing here. And Control Z is an undo. Now, I want this color right here to be yellow instead. So I click on that color where I filled it, and I can go to my yellow and click 
fill. Change the color down here. I can use my bucket to fill. And if I need to enlarge the space, I do control zero. And each one of these need to be enlarged slightly to fill in that space. So I would continue until I filled in all of my different um, color spaces that I need to fill in. <clears throat> right here I want to make this one green so I go over to my green and click green and you'll notice it's the same color as the other one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a darker shade but I want to use the dots to create the shade. So I am going to enlarge it, control zero. I'm going to duplicate it, control D. And I'm going to double click on the color square down here. And over here on the side, this will pop up. Yours may look like this instead of with the wheel. I just like the wheel. I can now scroll over to pattern, which is the fifth square over and click that. I want to change it to dots and I want it to be darker than the green above it. So I'm going to use polka dots large and it now creates a look of it being slightly darker. If I want it to look lighter, I duplicate it. Then I'm going to click on patterns over here and I want to scroll down to polka dots large white. And you'll notice how this looks lighter than the other yellow. I can make it even lighter by duplicating that layer, control D, and it'll make it even lighter because it has more small white dots. Once I've completed this, I'm now ready to make a speech bubble. To create a speech bubble, you're going to go to the ellipse tool in Inkscape and drag out a circle. You may not be able to see the outline of it, and if that's the case, then you're going to double click on the color box over here. Your fill stroke dialog box pops up. Click on the tab that says stroke paint and click the first square. If your line is too large or too small, you can change the size of it by changing the stroke style. If I wanted to make this into a cloud, I would draw several of these overlapping each other. Then I'll use my selection tool at the top and drag a rectangle around the edge and click on path union. I can change how that looks by adding a couple more here. I don't like the way that it turned out, so I'm going to select them again. Path, union. If you want to make a speech bubble instead of a thought bubble, you're going to click on the ellipse tool and draw an oval. Then you're going to click on the star tool and you want to make sure that the star is three corners, which makes a triangle. And you can draw the triangle, move it wherever you want. This can be adjusted later. Select both of the shapes and do path union. Now, if you want to change the direction of your point, you click on the nodes tool and this can be changed into going into a different direction. It can become very long. 
you can decide what to do with it. I want to put my speech bubble over here. So I'm going to click on it and I want it to be pointing the opposite direction. So I'm going to flip it and drag it over here. And then use my nodes tool to make the speech come in closer to him. Now, to add the text, I click on the capital A, and I click inside. I can select the text. and change the size by typing in a number here. I'm going to go at about 120 and then hit enter. And I want to center it. So right here, this icon aligns them directly below each other. And I can fill, click on the text and center it with the speech bubble. Okay, so now I'm ready to export this. So what I need to do is click File, Export PNG Image. When I do that, the Export Area dialog box pops up. I want to select everything, so I click Control A on the keyboard. If I have something that is drawn outside over here, that has no stroke on it, and I don't know it's there, I, I, when I click Control A, it's going to show up as a selected area. If this happens, you need to get rid of those items, so I'm going to click on the arrow key and try and find it. If I'm clicking around and I can't find it anywhere, but I know it's somewhere on this side, I can make a box and it will find where it is. And then I hit the delete key. Now I'm going to click Control A again. I should now have selection highlighted over here. And I want to export as, and I want to find where it's going to go. So I'm going to put it in my Google Drive, my drive, and Maybe you have an art folder. I'll put it in the art club folder. I'm going to title it Butterfly. Click Save. Now it's not saved yet. I've just saved the location where it's going to be saved. So I need to now click on the ex check export and you can see it exporting in progress. And once it's complete, I can now Go look and find that in Google Drive. I put it in Art Club. And it's called Butterfly. And there it is. So now it's ready to be uploaded to Canvas.